Vishnu Paraya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Shamiti Namane Namaste Sarasvati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvise Sasanya Bhaji Satarine Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Natananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vinda Panchata Patalu Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyavacha Patita nam pavane vyo Vaishnavi vyo namo namo Sri Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 So, I decided, I thought it would be worthwhile to, con- I thought it would be worthwhile to continue our discussion on Kartik. There's more to say, and then uh, perhaps in future classes we can discuss the Dhammadarashtaka. And there are some commentaries written on it, which I'd like to get access to. And then we can discuss those commentaries and get more absorbed in the Lila, Tamada Lila. So, yesterday we discussed a little bit about the benefit of Kartik and why we should do austerities and what austerities we should do. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about that just to kind of reiterate what we discussed. Kind of get it to go a little deeper in our hearts and discuss a little more broadly. So, mm, the, um, the activities of devotional service are under the personal energy of Krishna, which we call, or which is called Swarup Shakti, his own Shakti. And Bhakti is manifestation of Swarup Shakti. And if we increase bhakti, we increase our absorption or the benefit we get from that surup chakra, right? So the idea, the idea is that that is really Radharani Shakti. And Radharani is dear to Damodar. And if we get her grace, we get Krishna's grace. And really when you look at it from the perspective of of the Vaishnavas, that even though this is called the month of Damodar, it's also Radharani's month. Because she is the the most dear of Radharani, of Krishna. Um, she, She holds prema this is, this is, we were talking yesterday how Mother Yasoda was binding Krishna. She holds prema so she can bind it. So the one who has the most prema, that's Radharani, she can bind Krishna. So, hmm, the one who binds Krishna the most is Radharani. And there's a story we're going to tell you about how she bound Krishna also. But for now, we'll say the one who binds Krishna the most is Radha. And so this month ultimately honors Radha. Um, and Rupa Goswami says that Radha, another name for Radha, is Kartik Devi, or the goddess of this month. So really then understanding that, the austerities we're doing are to receive the blessing of Radha. But another aspect is that as we discussed yesterday, when you 
any service you do, any austerity you do, in this month, it comes back many, many, many fold. So you're getting a great return on your investment. And in the Nectar Devotion, Rupa Goswami says there are 64 limbs, angas, or items of devotional service, predominant items. And although Kartik comes during Chaturmasya, Chaturmasya in itself is four months of the rainy season in which the sadhus didn't travel and did austerities. And although Chaturmasya is a traditional time that we observed some austerity, in Nectar Devotion, only the month of Kartik and observance of vows and vratas and devotional service during this month is considered to be one of the 64 items. So by observing Kartik, we're observing one of the items of devotional service, like observing Janmashtami or observing the appearance or disappearance days, the great acharyas and the avatars, the das avatars and so forth. So it's very important. And during Kartik, there, there is the Govardhan Puja. During Kartik of Prabhupada's disappearance, of course, the Leela of Krishna being bound comes in Kartik. And we said yesterday, uh, Krishna first took care of the calves during Kartik. And so Gorkashore this Babaji is also having his disappearance during Kartik. So many, many things are going on. So um, now what are you going to do with all the benefits you get during Kartik? Because the Shastra says, if you do a little, little, little bit of something for Krishna during Kartik, you get a lot, a lot, a lot of return. And so, so you, you have to think, all right, if I'm getting a lot of return on my investment, what am I going to do with that return? So I'm, I'm doing austerity. Why? So I can become advanced in Krishna consciousness. Why do I want to be advanced in Krishna consciousness? Just so I can enjoy Krishna consciousness? No, I want to be advanced in Krishna consciousness so I can give more service to Krishna. So the idea is we do austerity, we get Krishna's mercy. When we get his mercy, or the mercy of Kartik Devi, or the mercy that's available this time of the year by pleasing Krishna, pleasing Radha, then we get mercy, and with that mercy, we can give back, right, more service. Just like when we're chanting, we're praying for mercy, but what do you do when you get that spiritual strength or that kripa? You, you're praying for mercy because you want to give it back. So we should never, ever think that I'm trying to advance so I can enjoy Krishna consciousness, so I can enjoy spiritual life. But I'm trying to get more mercy because it will increase my desire to serve, increase my effectiveness due to the purity I get. And then I can offer more service. I can do more. So whatever mercy Krishna is giving us, obviously he's giving it to us so we can give it back to him, right? Not that we can keep it. Also what mercy he's giving us, he's giving, he's giving it to us so that we can um, give it, you know, share it with others, right? Isn't it? So that's important. Hold on. Yeah, so it's just something we should be conscious of that we're we're not we're not doing austerity for the sake of getting any benefit other than the ability to be able to do to become a better devotee and then offer that back to Krishna, both in terms of the quality of the service, the quantity of the service, and the, the devotion or the love or the shadow of the love that we can offer, that we can give back. I can do my service more purely by giving mercy. So, um, and what would be the ultimate, what would be the ultimate benefit? We discussed yesterday how Jasoda was qualified to bind Krishna with love. 
that you can't bind him in other ways. So the ultimate, what would be our ultimate desire? That we would get love by which we could bind Krishna. Not because we want to control him, but because we know that will please him. And just like devotees do austerity, why do they do it? Okay, one reason is that I think if I do that, I will make advancement. But, but why do you want to make advancement? What's, what's behind it? What's the real reason? The reason is you, you want to please Krishna. So you're doing austerity ultimately to please Krishna, not for the sake of austerity. Because if that austerity didn't please Krishna, we wouldn't do it. We, wouldn't do, we don't do austerity for, this, for austerity's sake. That's the point. So whatever we decide to do during this month, it's meant to please Krishna or meant to give, give us the kripa, the mercy by which we could then please Krishna more, right? Um, and we're also talking here because this is Radharani's month that if we any service we do this month, any austerity we do, we'll please Radharani. So, and if we please Radharani, what happens? Then everything's good, right? Mm. Um, hmm. Well, Radharani is easily pleased, and especially easily pleased this month. So if you can please me, you're doing good. We will we will we will all be doing good if we get her creeper. All right. Um, hmm. So Rupa Goswami, he quotes a verse from the Padma Purana about Kartik. And this verse from the Padma Purana says, as I was saying before, it says you do a little bhakti in Kartik, you get a big reward. That's the uh, the main thing we should take away or understand from this class is that, or one of the main things, that this is not a month. This month, of all the months of the year, is not a is, is particularly a month where we should be. We shouldn't be lax in devotional service. So we talked yesterday about some of the things that we can do during Kartik. And um, basically we were saying whatever we whatever temples devotees devotees do, we should do. And perhaps do it better than normally. Uh, if you chant sixteen rounds, maybe you want to chant more rounds. If you don't chant sixteen, maybe you want to chant sixteen. If you're not so strict about certain things in your life normally. Well, Kartik, at least doing Kartik, be strict about it. You know, strict about what? Rising early, regulative principles, 16 rounds, these things. If you find something that you're slacking in, this is not the month to be slack. This, this month, particularly this month, we should, we could say, this is kind of like our Ramadan month, you know, be a good if you're going to be a good devotee any time of the year, this is the time of the year to do it. And that that will please uh, Radharani, will please Dhammadar. And you will make advancement and hopefully um, you'll get the mercy to be able to continue even after the month of Dhammadar. But at least this month, this is, this is not a month to compromise. Oh, um, I will only eat prasadam. I won't eat anything not cooked by devotees. Uh, that would be good. Uh, many devotees have that as their regular habit, but not everybody. If it's not your regular habit, that would be good if possible to do this month. If you're not doing this or not doing that, this is the month to do this and that, if this and that is really a higher principle. So you have to think. You have to think, what is it that you could be that you should be doing or can be doing better or you'd like to be doing, that would be helpful. And then during this month you do it. So everybody you know, needs to think, what can they increase? What can they give up? 
Um, do you have any inspiration for what you want to do or want to give up? Just put it in the chat box and then we can get inspired by one another. All of you, you can all inspire us. If you're not in the chat box, I can't tell you how to get into it, but I think it should be um, it should be on the where you are, where you're looking, there should be some way to get into it, register for it or something. Right? Because some of you are on it still. I assume it's not that difficult. Um, now, um, Radharani has another name. Um, and her name is Kirti, Kirti, Kirtika Kumari. The Kumari or the young daughter of Kirtika. So Kirtida Kumari. Or Kirtika Kirtida. Kirti. So another way that this month is about her. And, and, hmm. Hmm. Yes. So you can say. It's Damodar's month or it's Radha's month, right? Um, now, we're talking about the benefit you can get in uh, doing devotional service this month. And I don't know if you've heard the story. I think many of you may have heard the story, but it's quite interesting. There was a rat in the temple. And the rat had the habit of sucking the ghee from the ghee lamp. That was what he did. That was his food. And so, one time during this month in the temple, he was doing his normal sucking of the ghee. You know, this is obviously after the lamp has burned. He was sucking the ghee, but he became careless or anxious to get the ghee, and from one of the, and one of the lamps was still burning. So, in his attempt to suck the ghee, maybe from another wick, his nose caught on fire and he couldn't get it to stop burning. And then he was in great pain and he was jumping, jumping around. So Krishna took it that he was offering a wick. And that rat went to Vaikuntha. And Krishna thought, he said, he's offering me, this rat is like offering me a, a lamp during Kartik. So he went to Vaikuntha. So, that underscores the importance of offering a lamp. As all the Shastras says, during this month I should offer a lamp to Dhammadar. He, he likes that, and you shouldn't think that, well, that's not very significant. Maybe I should offer a bar of gold. All right, if you have a bar of gold, you can offer that also. But there's so many verses in Shastra that glorify the offering of a ghee lamp or a candle to Damodar during this month and the benefit you get from it. So sometimes in Krishna consciousness, you can't evaluate the value of an activity based on something material. Well, I could offer something better than a ghee lamp. I mean, ghee lamps, what's Krishna going to do with it? It's not that useful and it just burns out. But you can't think that way because that's what Krishna likes. And he likes it so much that you get so much benefit by offering it. So that's an important principle, right? Now, I'm going to tell you a story. Hmm. Now, we know the story of Jashoda. She was taking care of Krishna, breastfeeding him. And then she had some milk boiling on the oven, you know, the oven on the stove or wherever she was boiling it. Actually, the milk is a person, and the milk was jealous. And the milk thought, if Krishna drinks all of Mother Yashoda's breast milk, he's not going to drink my milk. So the milk had to do something. So the milk decided, I will boil, boil over, Mother Yashoda will hear it, she will put Krishna down and she'll run in to turn off the flame and that way she can feed him some of my milk. 
So that was just a, a little detail in the Leela, right? So anyway, Krishna was not happy. He felt neglected, and he was very upset. And he did some mischief. He got really angry. And he broke some pots. And, you know, he breaks pots. He does things that naughty boys do. And then Yashoda, she saw that. Oh, she was upset. So she began chasing him with a stick. And he was really frightened. Anyway, she didn't hit him with a stick. She just held it up. But to teach him a lesson, she said, look, I can't. You know, I can't let you act like this because if I don't discipline you, then when you're an adult, you'll be spoiled. So I have to teach you a lesson. You know, I have to teach you what's right. I have to teach you right from wrong. So now Mother Yasoda is teaching Krishna, who is the ultimate authority on right from wrong. She's teaching him right from wrong, which is interesting, Leela, isn't it? Um, I mean, you don't say that Mother Yasoda is a great scholar. She doesn't have her own Gita. But now the person who spoke Gita is taking instruction or being disciplined because he doesn't, according to her, he doesn't know right from wrong, and she has to let him know. So anyway, as we discussed yesterday, she there was a mortar, big, big, grinding mortar, like, you know, as tall as Krishna, two feet, three feet or so, and very heavy. So she, she thought, I'll punish him by tying him up to this mortar, tie some rope around his waist, and that rope, and we'll tie rope around the mortar, and then we'll take that rope and we'll tie it to his waist so he'll be stuck to the mortar and he can't move. At least he won't create any more mischief and he'll learn his lesson, and it's my duty as his mother, to give him lessons, right? To teach him a good lesson. Otherwise, he'll be spoiled. So, as we know, she was not successful. And no matter how much rope she brought, amazingly, there never was enough. It was always short. And it was always short, the same two inches or two fingers. It was quite bewildering. How did that happen? Anyway, Krishna didn't allow himself to be bound and the Acharyas say that, well, actually those two fingers, they represented an effort or endeavor and mercy. And so he was making the effort, but Krishna wasn't giving the mercy. So you need both. And when Krishna sees you make effort, he gives you mercy. Right? Sometimes. Sometimes we pray for mercy, but we don't make effort because we think prayer is enough. And it if you're very pure and your prayers are powerful, sometimes that may work. Uh, especially when you're helpless and all your efforts fail, you can't even make the effort. You can only pray. But generally, we want to make the effort. Krishna reciprocates with the effort. So that's the idea. She was making the effort. Nothing was happening. And then Krishna said, okay. You know, I'm pleased with your effort. And so I like to see effort. I like to see this. Um, there's a gap in our lives. And the gap is between where we are and we want to be. And so we make the effort. And by the effort, we make some progress. But our goals are much higher than our effort can get us. Or our effort can give us. So... That gap is between where we are and what we want to achieve, and that's where the mercy is, comes in. So the mercy fills the gap, right? Krishna says, Ananya, Chantayam Tomam Ye Jana Pariu Pasate, Tesham Hitam Yitamam, Yoga Kshema Vaham Vaham. So I feel, and basically, Krishna's saying, What you don't have, I'll give you. What you have, I'll protect. So I'll fill in the gap. So. So we try, we work, we try. There's a gap between what we want to achieve, what we actually can achieve, and that gap is filled up by mercy. So those, those two inches or two fingers 
represent effort, and effort then attracts Krishna, and Krishna says, okay, I will now agree to be bound up by you. So that's what happened. So we all know that pastime. And then he was bound up, and then she went away, and he was not supposed to be able to drag that motor, but he did. And uh, he ended up knocking down two trees. And we'll discuss that story later. But I was mentioning this story now because there's another story. There is another Dhammada pastime which Radharani. She bound Krishna. But sometimes Krishna's late to meet Radharani. So they have a they have a, they have dates. Did you know that? Radharani and Krishna have dates. They have locations and times. And Krishna is always thinking about when he'll meet Radharani. That's what's on his mind. You know, girls are on the mind of young boys. And that's what's on Krishna's mind. So he's always always thinking about when he's going to meet Radharani. But sometimes due to circumstances, he's late. And when he's late, Radharani doesn't like it. She gets very upset. So one time he was late. And then Krishna said, well, I'll just read you the story. Once in the auspicious month of Kartik, Krishna came late for a rendezvous with Radharani in her kun. So she has her own kun where, you know, she gets it ready. She makes it nice. So um, you can... Find the Dhamma Ashtaka sung by me on the above link. Oh, there's a link there. I guess it's on Mahatma's music, right? Oh, is it? It's somewhere else I can't see. The only link I see says censored. Must be a dangerous website. Anyway, um, so she has... Radharani has her kundas, and so her and her sakis, mangas, they all they want to make it nice for Krishna. Right, so Radharani's there, and she's making it all beautiful. And you can imagine you're, you know, making something really beautiful. You're making a meal for your friend, you're cleaning the house, and then they don't come. It's like, what's going on here? I've worked so hard, and they're not coming. Right? So... Krishna came late and then says, when you have a, a date with Radharani, Krishna, don't come late because you're going to get in trouble. In loving anger, in loving anger, because as we discussed, yeah, mahatmasmusic.com, somewhere on there, we're chanting Dhammadarashtaka. So loving anger means that she got angry just to increase Krishna's pleasure. So, a loving anger, Sri Radha looked at Krishna with frowning eyebrows. And, you know, that's kind of common when the husbands do something wrong. It's like, nah, nah, not good. So, that's what she did. That's where it comes from. And You know those looks sometimes women make at their husbands. Well, Radharani does that with Krishna sometimes. So in loving anger, Sri Radha looked at Krishna with frowning eyebrows. Using some golden vines, Radha then tied a rope around Krishna's belly to punish him for sh not showing up as promised. Krishna said he was late because Mother Yashoda kept him home for a festival. Then, seeing her mistake, Radha quickly untied her beloved Krishna. So she was angry. All right, Krishna, you're late. Get over here. Tied him up. Of course. Krishna didn't have to be tied. He agreed to be tied. As we said, he's tied by love. So, you know, he was happy, relishing being tied. But he was playing like he wasn't. And so he said, you know, but Mother Yasoda kept me. I was trying to get out, but I couldn't. I said, okay, I'm sorry. She untied him. 
So that's the Leela of Radharani telling Krishna. Um, now, in regards to um, devotional service, a lot of devotees go to Vrindavan for Kartik. Why? Because Shastra recommends go to Vrindavan if you can go. And so we have parikramas, uh, they've had parikramas going on in Gaudiya Math. It's a tradition that you go on parikrama during the month of Kartik to the pastime places of Krishna. So uh, Radha Swami would sometimes go and bring many devotees. And he goes many places. So uh, one year he came to Mayapur, South India. But the tradition, he does yatras everywhere, but the, the tradition is to go to Vrindavan. So um, they're doing various parikramas and um, big ones, very large ones. So uh, many gurus come to Vrindavan for Kartik and do parikramas with their disciples or followers or guests. Um, so If you can go to Vrindavan sometime during Kartik, that's very auspicious. If somehow you can just get there, even just for a few seconds, you know, just like um, Tanya from Germany is on a tour and they're going to Taj Mahal. And I said, it's only a few minutes off the road. You just take a left turn instead of going straight. And you can be in Vrindavan. She said, well, I don't know if the organizers will go. I said, even for a moment. Kartik. If it's during Kartik, for a moment. I don't know if it's during Kartik, but if it is, even for a moment, you just go. It's so auspicious, so powerful. And one of the things I was thinking today, and I was discussing with the devotee, that what's so interesting and um, relevant is that you know a lot of times we'll do devotional service, which is said to be very powerful. And sometimes we don't feel the power as much as the Shastra says it's powerful. We don't feel the effects of the power. Sometimes you do feel the power. You feel very blissful. You feel very purified. But at the same time, you don't feel it the way Shastra describes it as, you know, the kind of mercy you'll get from doing these Vratas and the, the kind of elevated state you're supposed to or you can achieve. You don't really feel it so much and you don't feel it in in terms of making major changes in your, what I would call your default setting, you know, the way you are. A lot of times you feel it more temporarily that, you know, when I'm on the Prakrama, when I'm hearing the Leela, I'm feeling very blissful and so on, but you know, the next morning, I'm just, I'm kind of still me again, you know, more or less the same me with the same challenges. And one of the things we should understand by by all the devotional service we're doing and and also following the Kartik Vrata and, and even seeing if you can spend a few days in Braj at this time is that as you progress in devotional service, you one of the ways you progress is through your realization so you're you're doing service and you're reading and you're realizing things that you weren't able to realize in your earlier days of devotional service because you've become more purified it's, i would say it's like you're more sensitive receptive yes you're more sensitive or you have the ability to extract more because your consciousness is purified. So when you're chanting, you're getting more. When you're hearing, you're getting more. And these are kind of the rewards for all the austerities you've done over the years. Like many of you are Sankirtan devotees. You've done many austerities. And there's a lot of things that you understand now in Krishna consciousness that perhaps you would not be able to understand or understand as well as you do if you didn't do that austerity. So although 
At the time, you may not feel the depth or the extent of the purification you're getting. But when you get realization or when you study our philosophy and you get some insight into what it means, or you get some special experience during Kartik or a special nectar coming from chanting and so forth, you, you should know it's all this service you've done over the years, all the austerities you've done all over the years, you're reaping the result. It may not be so obvious, but it, to me it becomes more obvious when you're, you're getting these special drops of, of taste or special drops of realization that those gifts are coming because of all the austerities you've done over the years. Even though you feel yourself still very conditioned, but at the same time, your soil of the heart is being fertilized so that stronger plants of realizations can grow, new plants of, re of realization can grow. So that, I think that's important to remember because sometimes we don't, we, sometimes we just, we don't, we don't equate what the Shastra is saying and what we're experiencing. And then we can have doubts. You know, is it really beneficial? Should I, should I really do these things? Does it really help? And the answer is yes, it does. And it's just you may not see it, the immediate effects. But it's compounded over the years and years of service. And you will gain insights and you will be able to access understandings that you couldn't earlier access unless you're purified. Just like you might be hearing a class and the devotee's talking about something, like when I were talking about Radha, Prabhupada said things like, Krishna's not really that beautiful, but when he's with Radha, he's beautiful. It's like, what does that mean? Maybe as a young devotee, it just confuses you. But as an older devotee, because you've done a lot of service and austerity, you understand, you're, you're like Krishna allows you to understand what that means. Or Krishna allows you to better understand the position of Radharani. Krishna allows you to better understand the relation between Radha and Krishna, which, which you could read, or you could hear about in class, but it didn't register. Or it didn't register as deeply as it is registering now. And by continuing, it will continue to, to register more deeply because, um, you know, part of the, the bliss or the ecstasy even <clears throat> of Krishna consciousness is your ability to absorb what you're hearing and what you're reading. <coughs> Excuse me. Your ability to extract not just words on a page, but go deeper, and gain inspiration, gain insight. And that comes from doing things like Kartik Vrata. So don't, don't think, well, you know, I did Kartik Vrata last year, and I'm still kind of the same. But that doesn't seem to be different. But always have faith that if you do these things, you're never the same. Even if it feels like it, you're never the same because there's a little more purification is there. And sometimes, sometimes it takes a lot of purification before you can get to a, a level of consciousness that you can start to understand more or experience more than you, were, than you had yesterday. There's something I told before which is quite interesting. I had um, moved to Vrindavan in the late 90s. And, and one thing that's much different about Vrindavan from the West is that in the West, we are extremely absorbed in giving Krishna consciousness to others. And relishing Krishna consciousness, giving it to yourself, is necessary in order to give it to others. But in Vrindavan, there's more of a mood of cultivating it. And then when you leave Vrindavan, there's more of the mood of giving it. Although it should be both everywhere. But that's just, when a devotee goes to Vrindavan, usually he's on vacation. 
And he's really trying to give himself to more, live up more bhakti and, and just understanding, taking the time to understand Krishna consciousness more deeply. But then when we go out, it tends to be the focus on out, outward outreach, giving, giving, giving. Maybe sometimes it gets out of balance where we're, we're more focused on giving than nourishing ourselves. So I had just been for a year very actively engaged in preaching that I'd come to Vrindavan. And then at that time in Vrindavan, the classes and the curriculums and the discussions were all very rasic, very filled with lila and understanding of the lilas from the sandarbhas. And it was different than what I was normally exposed to in the West. And I was kind of thinking, this is not really like what Prabhupada did, or are we really supposed to be thinking this way or listening to such things? And part of me was relishing it. And part of me was thinking, but what's all, you know, why is everybody talking about all these things? This Leela, that Leela, this commentary on that Leela, and this twist on that Leela, and this, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't um, the way Prabhupada preached. And a lot of classes were like that. So it's not that I had a doubt, but it was more, more kind of like, this is, is not the way uh, Krishna consciousness is normally given. And it was more like my feeling was like, what's, why is everyone making such a big deal about all these leelas? Why aren't they talking more philosophy? Anyway, so I wasn't really in that mood. And then he went on Govardhan Parikrama. And then right towards the end of the Parikrama, I, I saw that there was a change and that, that I wanted to hear more about Krishna's pastimes and those intricate leelas. And this happened because that happened and that happened because that happened. And Krishna winked this way, but one gopi thought it was that way, and she told Radharani this. Then Radharani got mad at Krishna, but Krishna liked it, and then he told his, pretended he didn't like it, then he told his friend to tell this gopi that, to tell, you know, it's like, all of a sudden, all of that's becoming attractive to me. And I realized, because I did Govardhan Prakrama, it, it changed me. But that was, that was instantly, it was right at the end. And then when I got home, I was like devouring all these books about Vrindavan and all the residents of Vrindavan, the places of pastimes, the position of Radha and the, the Sakis and the Mandaris. And I was just like, I couldn't get enough of it. So that was an interesting experience, wasn't it? So um, you, don't, you don't know when it's going to come. You don't know what you're going to understand. But as you do austerity, as you do service, you will see that there are just some things that one day you will understand that you, you realize that you, you never really understood that and you finally got it. That's the grace of your service. So <clears throat> don't think it's not worth doing something special for Kartik because you will be rewarded at some point or maybe it will take you five Kartiks before you really appreciate Krishna consciousness on a deeper level. But whatever it takes, it's worth it. So, um, yeah, so um, if you're near Vrindavan, if you can get off work and get there, even for a few moments, if you live in Delhi, you know, you want to get there, you know, somehow or during Kartik, you just want to get there for at least a few moments. Some people like Yamini are extremely fortunate because she doesn't live that far from Vrindavan. And um, Yamini, uh, don't take it for granted because we're talking to people all over the world, many of whom have never even been to India, what to speak of Vrindavan. Um, so you're very fortunate. 
And I know if you live in Delhi or on the way to Vrindavan, as Jamini lives on the way, <laughs> it, it becomes so normal. You know, it's like I live in Florida, so I can go to Disney World. And someone in Switzerland might think, oh, Disney World. You're so fortunate you only live two hours from Disney World. I live 12 hours from Disney World and 800 euros from the Disney World or something. I, I'm thinking, eh, Disney World, no big, I can go whenever I want. So it's something like that. So don't ever take it for granted, especially dear listeners. It's a, Radharani is very merciful and she'll give you, um, when you're there in Vrindavan, she'll give you special blessings and special taste. And um, also, um, those of you who can't go, right? Ashwini, if you can't go to Vrindavan, you have to create Vrindavan in your home, in your mind, pictures in your home, read books about Vrindavan, <clears throat> and live in Vrindavan somehow or other during this month as much as possible. Now, you have a question. So I have to come a little closer to read it. I am not a pure Hare Krishna devotee yet, but I can totally relate to what you are saying now because I understand life much more now since reading Srila Prabhupada's books and listening to your lectures every day on your website and on YouTube. Yeah. The nice thing about this Ashwini, Ashwini, Ashwini. Yeah, the nice thing about this is that process will continue. <laughs> Maybe someday you're going to think, yeah, now I finally understand. I didn't understand, now I do. And then a few years later, you're going to think, you know, two years ago I thought I understood, but now I realize I didn't really understand, and now I understand. And then three, three years later, you're going to think, you know, that point that I thought I finally understood, well, now I understand it more deeply. And then you kind of get the realization that Krishna consciousness is dynamic, so you're never going to hit an end to the understanding. And, and we can't understand unless Krishna allows us to understand, and that's all it is. And so whenever, whatever realization we have, we just be grateful that Krishna has given it to us, that we could understand everything. Because you know, Krishna consciousness is transcendental, and a lot of, a lot of it you're not going to understand with the limitations of your mind and senses. So the, the only way you will understand it is through revelation. You know, even you can read books and you can understand conceptually what the book is saying, but it doesn't mean you actually understand it. That is Krishna's grace to understand. And of course, you can say by the grace of the Guru, the Guru explains it. So yes, I did. But even he explains it, it takes some mercy to just understand his explanation. Or at least you can say it takes mercy to be able to follow it, to be able to do it, because that's a whole, a whole other problem. Right? Understanding is one thing. Doing, I may not have the power to do it even though I understand it. So that, that is a grace that comes from Guru and Krishna due to our, you know, whatever efforts we make. Krishna is anxious for us to come back. So always, we always should always have faith that whatever effort we make, it will be rewarded. And Krishna knows what we're doing. And it may not be rewarded materially, but certainly it will be rewarded spiritually. And, you know, from Krishna's point of view, the real reward is spiritual, not material. So, you know, <laughs> we think maybe the reward is the real reward is material, but Krishna doesn't think like that. You know, he knows what you want, but he understands what the real reward is. Right? So, thank you for sharing. Okay. Let's read a little more. This is what Prabhupada writes in the Nectar of Devotion, which is kind of an inspiration 
to get on the next plane to India. You have, uh, what's the date today? Today the 8th or 9th? Ninth, right? So you have a week and then get there. Right? Took seven days to get yourself to Vrindavan. So we'll have a big party, see all the devotees there. So Prabhupada says the execution of devotional service during Orjva Brata in the month of Kartika is especially recommended to be to be performed at Mathura. The Lord does not award devotional service to ordinary persons who are not serious about it. But even such unserious persons who execute devotional service according to the regulative principles during the month of Karti and within the jurisdiction of Mathura in India are very easily awarded the Lord's personal service. So it means, uh, one of the meanings is that somebody's not so serious about devotional service. Six days. Somebody's not so serious about devotional service, but they come to Mathura or Vrindavan. When they do service during Kartik, they'll become, they'll become serious. They'll advance to the point where they'll take it seriously. That's what it means. If you know what I mean. Um, very easily awarded the Lord's personal service. So it means they'll want to do more service. And then we see that sometimes. Um, the, yeah, the ninth in South Africa. So I'm in Scotland, so I think we're on the same time zone. South Africa, yeah. So, somebody comes, what does Prophet say? Persons who are not serious about it. The Lord does not award devotional service to ordinary persons. It means, you know, if you don't really want Krishna consciousness, Maya just comes and goes, whoop, let's go. <laughs> Taking you out of here. You come to the temple, eh, I don't know. And these people look like fanatical, and, you know, there's so many religions, and... Why is this better than another? And I have my own way. Okay, Maya, Krishna gives a call. Maya, see this guy? Useless. Get him out of here. Not exactly that, like that, but we're having fun. But you understand that in, if that's the attitude, it's not really, a person's not really intent much on devotion. So basically still a plaything in the hand of Maya. So now this verse is saying, but if that kind of person comes to Braj and does some little service, it will get magnified in their heart to the point that they'll want to do service. That's powerful, isn't it? So bring all your relatives to Vrindavan and engage them in offering a lamp. Now, you might say, well, I've done that. And my parents are not really, they're kind of the same as they always were. Anyway, don't worry. It may not happen in this life, but it'll happen. Don't, in other words, don't underestimate the power of doing service during Kartik and especially in Vrindavan because it'll have its effect. And you just, you have no, we have no idea of the powerful effect that devotional service has on someone. You know, people are engaged in material activity. That's what it seems like is going on externally, but internally, there's a different world going on. And that, that activity of offering a lamp in Vrindavan during Kartik might be all that was necessary to uh, grant that person devotional service in their next life. Because I think, I think what's going to happen, it has to happen. There's so many people are now doing devotional service. Now think, think 50 years ago, how many people were doing devotional service in Mahaprabhu's movement? Not so many. I mean, obviously, outside of India, nobody. And now, what do we say? Like a half of, how many books have we distributed? Like 500 million books around the world. So it's 500, you know, more or less 500 million people. That's a lot of people have our books. That's like a one out of 15 or something. All right. Some people have more than one. So let's say one person out of 20 on the planet has gotten our books. Three billion plates of prasadam. 
I mean, that's huge. I don't know how many people, well, let's say a million people on the planet have taken prasad. I mean, you know, you add up all the devotional service that is going on. And then you think, okay, then according to our philosophy, persons who have done service should be able to do service in their next life. So I think we're going to see, as time goes by, more and more people attracted to becoming devotees and just like taking to it right away because they did devotional service in the past. So when Prabhupada started in America, we're not, we're not at least Americans at that point, we're not aware that they did devotional service, but now devotional service is being done all around the world. So I think we're going to see more people becoming devotees just because all the service that they've done in past lives, right? So now, you know, people my age who were in touch with the Krishna conscious movement when they were young, and there are many, you know, within the next 10, 20 years, most of those people will be in gone. And in another 10 or 20 years, let's say 40 years from now, 30 years from now, they'll be of age. And you'll see a lot of people becoming devotees and attracted to Krishna consciousness, I think, because of the service that they did. And then it'll just multiply. The, the movement will grow. More and more people will do devotional service, and then more and more people will come in their next life and do devotional service. So even if, you know, your dear mother comes to Vrindavan and offers a ghee lamp, but you don't really see any change, dramatic change, it'll happen. Maybe it'll happen later in her life, maybe in another life. But don't underestimate the power. That would be a mistake. Okay. Um, I want to read some verses. Bhakarti. There's a, um, a Shastra, it's called the Kartik Mahatmya, and Mahatmya means glorification. So glorification of Kartik. Quote, They who as a joke serve Lord Hari during Kartik and Mathura will attain pure devotional service. What to speak of those who serve the Lord with faith and devotion? We might say, why would someone serve the Lord as a joke? I think the the point is, even if somebody does, in other words, it's the same idea as the last verse, even if they're not serious, you know, it's just like, you know, you happened to do some service during Kartik and you just, you weren't serious about it, but you did it somehow or other. Then, hmm, <clears throat> those people will attain pure devotional service then what to speak of those who are actually devotees who do it seriously. So that's such a blessing for Kartik, isn't it? Even people not serious about bhakti, they do bhakti. Um, so we had discussed yesterday, um, wherever you are, even if you're not in Vrindavan, increase your hearing and chanting, offer your lamp to Damodar. Now here's another quote. About the um, power of offering a lamp. It's interesting. By offering a lamp during the month of Kartik, one burns away a collection of sins as big as Mount Meru or Mount Mandala. Of this there is no doubt. In other words, anytime Shastra says you do something, you burn out your sins. Uh, as devotees, we should translate that as purification, contamination. So, burns out a mountain of contamination. That would be nice, right? Burn out a mountain of contamination. I think that would be helpful. Burns away a collection of sins as big as Mount Meru or Mount Munda. And uh, of this there is no doubt. So basically, Shastra is saying, don't doubt it. And Krishna in the Gita, in the seventh chapter, Yesha Tvantakata Papam, he said, you need to clear out sins, and then you can take up, you'll, without sin, sin is a, it's a contamination that blocks you from being determined in devotional service. So you can clean out past sins, put you in this ideal situation where you can take to Krishna consciousness. Yesham tvantakata papam punya janma punya janma punya 
Tesham Santika Sapatam Punyaka Janana Punyakarnam Te Dwanda Mahanyamita Bajante Mam Dridavataha then if the sins are cleared out then you do bhakti with Dridavata. Just Dridavata means to turn them. So yeah. When you clear out the sins, all this sinful contamination, all the effects of past sins, that's good. That's helpful, isn't it? Okay, one more verse. And um, I'm supposed to go on a program now. And there, the driver is going to come in any moment. So I'll read one more verse. A person who offers a laugh during the month of Kartik attains a result that cannot be obtained with even a hundred yajyas or a hundred pilgrimages. That's pretty good. So, as we were saying before, the, the benefit of offering a lamp, don't see it materially anymore. It's just a lamp. But Shastra glorifies the offering of a lamp as so pleasing to Krishna and therefore so beneficial and purifying for us that we should do it. So this is one of the things we all need to do during Kartik, right? So, thank you for listening, and tomorrow we are going to have a class for the Australians, and that is at 11.15 UK time, 8.15 London time, um, probably something like 5.15 East Coast America, and South African time, probably 11.15 or 12.15, right? I think we're on the same time zone. So if you want to come, we've been talking about women. I believe we're still, no, excuse me, we've been talking about love. And we're reading some quotations by Bhakti Thakur about love. And uh, we had talked yesterday a little bit about the love of your soda and how, how inspiring that is and how we learn from that. So Taught, uh, the goal of these classes in talking about love was to define love as distinct from what we call love in the material world, to understand the nature of spiritual love. And by understanding the nature of it, then we can start practicing it in our life. 345 in India. Okay. So 11.15 London time. 345 Indian time. Probably 5.15 East Coast time, 2.15 West Coast America, and then, um, anyway, you can figure out if you want to come, where, uh, the time. Okay, so we'll stop there. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, thank you for coming, and we hope to see all of you in Vrindavan next week. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.